I don't know about you, but I love watching Nintendo Switch Collection videos on YouTube. I can't get sick of it because it gives me an idea of new games to try out or cool accessories that I didn't even know existed. It also gives me an opportunity to find other creators who might have similar gaming interests as myself. So I've posted a Switch game collection before but I haven't shared my entire collection with you yet. It has grown a little bit in 2020 and by no means is it as impressive as other collections that I've seen out there but it's all mine and I love it all the same. So if you're looking to gift a Nintendo Switch for the holiday season or maybe just get one to treat yourself because after the 2020 we've all had, I'm sure you deserve it. <laughs> if you don't know where to begin, hopefully this video helps you out a little bit. By the way, hey, my name is Kat, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, thank you so much for joining. I post mostly Nintendo related content but moving forward I would love to get started on some Let's Play series to tackle some games off my backlog. I do collection videos such as this, some gaming pickups and other odds and ends so if that sounds like something you might be interested in, please feel free to subscribe and also leave a like and comment down below if you would like to see more. So starting off with the Switch itself, or Switches in this case, um, I have my V1 Nintendo Switch, the very first one that I got. Um, please excuse the reflections right now, it's a little bit dirty as well. So ignore that. <laughs> but I have my original V1 Switch um, and I reshelled the Joy-Con to these really cool atomic purple ones. Um, you're going to see quite a bit of custom Joy-Cons in my collection as well today. Um, and of course I also have, which it doesn't have the Joy-Con that belongs with it right now, but I have a second switch. <laughs> this is the Animal Crossing Edition Nintendo Switch. I should pop it out of the case to show you. So here is the Animal Crossing Edition Nintendo Switch. I did do an unboxing for this one um, in my channel. If you'd like to go ahead and watch, I'm sure I'll leave it somewhere in the cards or in the description below. But I have the red Mario Red Joy-Con on it right now just because um, I'm feeling festive. It's, you know, nearing Christmas time. Um, I've got my red nails on <laughs> and it matches my Switch, so I don't know, girly, nerdy things, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so I have the two Switches. I really don't need two Switches, but here's how I'm justifying it. <laughs> When I got my first Switch, it was a grey um, version 1 Nintendo Switch, I got it fully anticipating that there would be an Animal Crossing edition once the game comes out, and I knew that I wanted to get it eventually, so I was already planning on selling it once that one comes out. But I couldn't get myself to when I did finally get the Animal Crossing Switch. I did find out that my first Switch is an unpatched version. Okay, my battery died and we're finally back, but I was saying that an unpatched switch basically allows you to install homebrew and emulation onto your switch via the software, whereas the newer switches you may have to use um, mod chips in order to do the same thing. Because unpatched switches are probably going to be a bit uncommon seeing that, you know, it's going to be the older model switches and there's new ones constantly being released. I figured that I would keep this one because if you know me, you would know that I love me some retro games. And I know it's not for everyone, but I absolutely appreciate what emulation can do to be able to let me play those retro games. So I will be holding on to my V1 Switch and that's my long roundabout way of, <laughs> I guess, justifying um, the unnecessary uh, ownership of two Switches. But getting that out of the way, you've seen already um, one of my custom Joy-Con and I'm about to show you the rest of it. So here is a pair which I actually shared on this channel when I made it. It's a nice turquoise and white one um, which was very much inspired by the turquoise switch light. When it was first announced and I wasn't sure if I was going to get one or not, I wanted to 
um, make my full-size switch into a turquoise and white one as well and it's even got the white buttons on the side which I like um, I know Extreme Rate, the company where I got these buttons from, actually released a new version um, which also has white buttons for the plus minus and the home and share buttons which this one does not have yet um, and these are also just um, thumb grips so I didn't replace the sticks on this to be a white one but there are options for you to do that as well if you're interested. Now my most recent shell swap um, and this might come to no surprise too as well, is a Game Boy Edition one. So it looks like the um, original DMG Game Boy, um, and this is from the same company. I love the details with the buttons, the grey, and also the, you know, fake speaker grills on there, just like the Game Boy um, DMG version. I love the Nintendo Game Boy. It's my absolute favorite console handheld to collect for. And I mean, look how fire that is. <laughs> I absolutely love this. This is my most recent shell swap. The remainder actually kind of fitting in with the theme of the retro consoles is in my Nyko um, Joy-Con charger which is part of the accessories that I will be showing you today. I love using it because owning a lot of Joy-Con, it's convenient being able to just grab one and go if for whatever reason the current Joy-Cons that I'm using are dead. Um, I always have spare ones over here to be able to use at any time. So I have on here the Super Nintendo Joy-Con, which I did a shell swap off. And also, actually, my very first shell swap that I ever did, which is the NES Joy-Con. So these were my very first shell swap that I ever did. Um, I was following a YouTube video <laughs> that I found online and I was so, so scared to mess up because I was watching others that were sharing their experience and they were snapping cables and losing screws and um, I was so nervous but thankfully it survived and it's still going strong to this day. No Joy-Con drift and I'm very, very pleased with it. And it definitely completes my retro homage to my Nintendo Switch collection. <laughs> I did have way more Joy-Con than what I'm showing you now, but I slowly sold them off as you might have been able to notice. I don't have any more stock Nintendo Joy-Con besides the Animal Crossing edition. Oh, which I actually almost forgot to show you because it wasn't on my Switch um, AC edition Switch, but here is the very very cute Joy-Con that came with those, the mint and blue and of course the sandy white back. Very tropical, very island theme, it's so perfect. Um, the dock for this switch as well, which you've probably seen all over the internet, I love so much and I think it's the best limited edition switch that have come out. It's the only one so far that is a different color and the design on it with the Nook Twins is just so adorable. But besides that pair and also the Mario Red Joy-Con that were already on one of my Switches, I don't own any more of the stock Nintendo Joy-Con colors. Not that I don't want them, I want every single one of them, but it's already hard to justify having these many Joy-Con um, grips. So the one that I had on my Animal Crossing Switch earlier is this one by Smotree. Um, and I like it because, let me just put the switch in here real quick, I like it because you are able to access the Joy-Con really easily if you're wanting to remove it. Um, you have that and then you also have access to the kickstand in the back here which makes it easy to take your micro SD card in and out. Um, and all the ports and cutouts are nicely, you know, exposed. I do have generally smaller hands, so the grip on this might not be big enough for some people, but it is plenty enough for me, um, and it is very, very comfortable to play for a long period of time. But besides this one, I do have other grips as well. 
Um, this was the first one that I purchased because I'm pretty sure I got it on sale on Amazon for like $5 Canadian, which, you know, I can't pass that up <laughs> because I do play my Switch mostly on handheld. I'm always on the hunt for a comfortable way to play with my Switch. So this is just a very generic um, Switch grip. The grips on these are a little bit more than the Smotry ones, um, but I'm sure if you type Nintendo Switch Grip on Amazon, you'll be able to find a version of these um, floating around somewhere. The most recent grip that I actually picked up is this one by Oibo. It is very much a copy of the Satisfy Grips, but for a fraction of the price. I also like that it has this giant kickstand on the back, um, as well as some slots for games on the back there, right at the top. So it's very convenient for me because when I have my switch on here, I don't put it back in a case because I don't have a case that does fit this one. So it just typically sits by my TV or my side table um, and I have the games that I play the most currently um, in here. You're able to just slide your switch in there and it fits perfectly even with my screen protector on and then this bar at the top just kind of clicks in and makes sure that your switch is nice and secure on there. I've never had an issue of this grip scratching um, my Joy-Con up or my switch at the top here so I do really like it. It does add a bit of heft to the switch but you know if I'm just playing lounging with my switch at home it doesn't bother me too too much but yeah I do really enjoy this grip. Last but not the least for handheld play I do also have the Hori um, Split Pad Pro. This I actually just got about a week ago um, and I don't know how I've gone without these for so long. I've been seeing these everywhere um, and everyone who likes playing their Switch on handheld mode highly recommend these but why I didn't jump on them immediately is because it is missing the rumble function and also the NFC function. So for the price that it is, at least here in Canada, it's only like $15 less than the original um, Pro controller. So I was hesitant just because of the price point, but for what I'm getting with the comfort level and the ease of use, I am definitely glad that I finally have these. It is so, so comfortable to play. It's like you're holding an Xbox One controller, but attached to a Switch. Speaking of Xbox One controller, I have made the comparison between that and the Switch Pro controller before, just because of how it feels in the hand. It's a little bit slimmer. I actually have the Xbox controller right here. I put it side by side on my Switch accessories video as well, which will be linked somewhere again. <laughs> but yeah, these are probably my most favorite controllers of all time. Now one last thing before the games, I promise. <laughs> but here are my cases. I have gone through more of these, but these are the ones that survived. Um, all my trials <laughs> because I do like playing my switch on handheld it was important for me to find a case that I'm able to throw my switch into and carry around with me if I wanted to my very first case and probably still my favorite actually to this day is the Tom Talk um, the slim hard one this was also featured on my top five switch accessories video so if you want a closer look you can definitely see that there um, as well as this one it is by Hori um, it is their deluxe slim pouch and I really like it as well very minimal straightforward of course I had to add to my case collection my Animal Crossing um, Nintendo official case there and I love that it has the two colors on either side. Um, this is actually the case that I'm using the most lately um, so I have some of my game cards in there. And lastly this one is also by Hori I believe. Um, it's their just very basic black Nintendo Switch case. Um, I like it because this is probably the biggest case that I own. It's the most hefty, um, it's also the most protective, so I might 
um, use this whenever I'm traveling. I'm sorry if this is going on longer than I had expected, but I did just want to do a fun little, you know, casual sit down and chat with you guys and talk about my collection. But if you made it this far, thank you so much. I appreciate you. We're moving on to the games. In alphabetical order, I think. <laughs> I tried to organize it recently on my shelf, but if some games are out of order, please don't mind. Um, the first one being, of course, Animal Crossing New Horizons. This game needs no introduction. This game is in a shrink wrap still because the day that Animal Crossing was being released in my city was like the first day or two that lockdown restrictions were put in place back in the spring. So I wasn't sure if I was even going to be able to pick up my copy of Animal Crossing. So I decided to just download it onto my Switch um, as soon as midnight hit because I could not wait. But the next day, my local EB Games still called and said, you know, we are putting down um, some rules so that people can still safely pick up their copies. Um, and so I still went ahead and got it because I'm a little bit addicted. But you know, so is the rest of the world now. <laughs> so I'm so happy um, that this came out because I don't even want to think about how lockdown would have gone without this game. This was definitely an escape for myself and for my friends. You know, we visited each other on our islands, so it was so cute. We might have not been able to celebrate some birthdays and some events, but we had Animal Crossing, so... The next game I have is Assassin's Creed The Rebel Collection. This one has Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Assassin's Creed Rogue. I got this mainly for Black Flag. Um, Black Flag came out when I was kind of taking a break from gaming at the time, so I didn't get to play it on the Xbox, but you know, now that it's on the Switch, I'm very excited to get into it and play it on handheld. This is definitely easier for me to play through some games on handheld for some reason. If I wanted to sit down and have that gaming experience, that's why I have my Xbox and PlayStation, and very recently my PC, which is behind me. <laughs> um, if you want me to do a video on that or talk about my specs, as well, let me know down below. Um, the Binding of Isaac Rebirth, or Afterbirth, my my bad. Um, very recent pickup. I think I got this for like five dollars off of um, a local buy and sell page. So it's a game that I've been wanting to try, and I couldn't pass it up for that price. Dragon Quest Eleven. This is the definitive edition that first came out for the Switch, I believe, and now it is also out on other consoles, if I remember correctly. I think I saw a flyer for it, but I've never played a full Dragon Quest game before. I love Dragon Quest Builders 2. I didn't get into the first one as much. I had it on the PS Vita, but I couldn't get into it, but with Dragon Quest Builders 2, I was addicted and it made me really want to try a mainline Dragon Quest game and I kept getting told that this is the way to do it. So I picked it up but, you know, backlog unfortunately just because of all the other games that I'm trying to work through. Um, hoping to get on that for the holidays though, so I'm very excited. Katamori Damacy reroll, also still in packaging because it was kind of a similar situation with Animal Crossing where I didn't really think that I could get a physical copy of it because it was released exclusively in EB Games, at least um, where I'm from. I don't know if that's Canada wide. And scalpers were picking it up left and right. They were selling for like 150 to 200 Canadian at the time. And there was just no way that I was going to pay that, even though I really, really wanted to try the game. I've never played a Katamari game before this. So I also downloaded it. But then my local shop actually ended up getting a restock and they were selling it for $20 on sale at the time. So I thought that I would snag one up. LA Noir for the Nintendo Switch. Um, a game that I've still yet to finish. Another one in my backlog that I really, really, really want to finish. Um, I had it first when it released on the Xbox 360 but I never finished it. I would play maybe like 
30 to 40 percent through and then i would get distracted with life stuff or another game eventually i will get to finish this next is lego city undercover if I was going to have a Lego game for the Switch, it was definitely going to be this one. I keep getting told that it's like a GTA for kids. <laughs> Obviously not a kid, but Lego games have always been very fun. The first one I think that I played were the Star Wars ones on the PS3 ages ago. Um, and I love Lego games to this day. I think it's just a fun kind of casual experience for all ages. So my niece and nephew also love to play Lego games, so they're able to get into this whenever they're visiting. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, of course, need no introduction. It's Mario Kart. If you're looking for a game to get someone for the holidays and you have absolutely no idea get them this one. It's so fun for single player um, and it's so fun for local multiplayer and online multiplayer. Minecraft for the Switch. I've never played Minecraft before this version. Um, I remember buying this when Pewdie <laughs> PewDiePie was doing his Let's Play on his channel and I found it so fun to watch that series that you know, I was baffled that I've never tried Minecraft before when it was at the peak, like the first peak popularity of it because I know a lot of my friends did play it. So I got the Switch version because again, I thought it would be fun to do on the go. Uh, it's fun, <laughs> but I think I find it more fun to watch other people play it. I might get it for the PC and see if you know, I might be able to get into it more, but on the Switch, I found it a little bit hard to get into the controls, um, but yeah, I don't know, Minecraft. <laughs> Octopath Traveler. So this one, beautiful game, another one that I am fully intending to dive back into to finish. I unlocked all of the characters and I think I grinded, you know, a few levels each. Um, through all of them. I was trying to do it like very balanced and not just focus on one character. But you know, the art, beautiful, the gameplay, I really enjoy. Um, the story was a little bit simpler, but I didn't mind that. RPGs like these can be a bit grindy and it's what kind of turns me away from it a little bit. Not because I don't enjoy it, but it just takes a lot of time. <laughs> and as you can see, I have, you know, a lot of games that I'm trying to work through um, from my backlog, and this is only my Switch collection. So Octopath, if you're looking for a good, you know, um, RPG, it's very inspired by the classic pixel RPGs from the retro days. Pokemon Shield very controversial um, game, Sword and Shield. I think people were already very vocal about their thoughts on this game. For me personally, it was the first Pokemon game that I've enjoyed as much as I enjoyed it for a while. Was it a bit too easy? I would probably say so, yeah, but it didn't take away from the enjoyment um, of it for me at least and I love the new designs for the Pokemon I loved the open world um, I'm very excited to see what they come up with you know following this one obviously bigger and grander in terms of the world and probably the gameplay as well the expansion pass um, I live armor and crown tundra if I remember correctly I did download as well Splatoon 2 Another one that needs no introduction. I'm not very good at it, but it is fun to jump into once in a while. I'm gonna try to hammer through the rest of these a little bit quicker. Story of Seasons, Friends of Mineral Town. Um, a very highly anticipated game for me. I played this on the Game Boy Advance, loved it, finished it, kept replaying it through the years. So when I heard that this was coming to the Switch, I was over the moon. I got this for my birthday, given by my sister, so it was even more special because she and I would play together on the little like Game Boy SP screen together, um, working on my farm. So I don't know, it's just so fun. And she got herself her own copy as well. So Super Mario 3D All Stars, um, another sealed game in my collection. I did end up downloading it too. 
I wasn't sure if I was going to get my hands on this, but we ended up getting a huge stock in my city, so Smash Brothers Ultimate. What do you think about the announcement that Sephiroth from Final Fantasy is the latest Smash fighter? I think that that's so cool. I love seeing characters that are not Nintendo join the Smash universe. Um, Sephiroth might be a little bit OP, I don't know. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to trying him out. Um, not so good at Smash Brothers anyway, but it's still fun and that's the whole point, right? <laughs> Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition. What can I say about this one? I love Tales games, I really do enjoy them. I'm looking forward to playing more. I enjoyed this one as well. I liked the bonuses, being that it's a Definitive Edition. Um, didn't finish it. Another one for my backlog. But I did get very far on it. Um, I would say about 75-80%. So I don't know if I'm able to just pick it up and resume from the point where I left off or if I'm going to completely forget about how to play it and the story, but I did really like it. Um, and the last three here are my bigger box games and that's Super Mario Odyssey, um, another one if you know you don't know what to get for yourself or to gift someone for the holidays. Mario Odyssey. This is such a good game. I don't think I remember having this much fun with a Mario game before. I just am not good at Mario, okay? It's not that I don't have anything against Mario, <laughs> but I'm not I'm not that good at like the the sideways platformer Mario's. This so much fun. The worlds are so beautiful. Mario Odyssey. Of course we have The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This is the one with the bonus explorer's guide as well. What is there to say about Zelda Breath of the Wild that other people haven't said already? It's a masterpiece. It's a beautiful game. Um, it actually, funny story, it took me a while to get into because my first time that I picked this up I found it really hard that the weapons would break and I would always get killed by the monsters that I ran into, but um, a few months later I picked it up again and tried it out and I just, I couldn't put it down, you know? I'm nowhere near defeating Calamity Ganon, but I'm still working through <laughs> finding more shrines and going to look for the Master Sword is next on my list, but yeah, I'm enjoying taking my time with this. Um, if I'm getting, you know, burnout from the other games that I'm playing, this is always a nice go-to um, to pick up again and just, yeah, just continue where you left off, so. Breath of the Wild, another recommend as well, by the way, if you don't know what you're going to get for the Switch. And very last game is The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, which props for CD Projekt Red by the way, how they package this is just so beautiful. It's got the booklet, it's got stickers, it's got other goodies in here, um, similar to how they packaged Cyberpunk 2077. Um, I'm very, very impressed with this company and very impressed that they were able to port it over to the Switch. I am playing this right now as well. Um, I first played it on the Xbox One, but it's just, again, I just like playing games on handheld. So that <laughs> brings us to the end of this video. So there you have it, my entire Nintendo Switch collection for 2020. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I definitely didn't plan to make it this long, so I appreciate you. <laughs> but it was my first time doing a video like this in a while, and I was just really excited to sit down and chill and talk to you guys. So if you enjoyed, please feel free to leave a like down below subscribe and comment just saying hey you know how are you doing <laughs> i hope you have a good holiday season and stay safe until next time see you soon